Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is day three of the session 2022. Before I do this ramble, review and stream of consciousness about the session 2022, let me tell you about my membership site. It's onlinemagic.co, over 600 videos from complete beginner to advanced with all manner of magic and adding to it every single month, at least four hours a month I'm adding to the course. And I've just uploaded or just about to upload the new uh, chapter of my Royal Road to Card Magic course, which is every single thing from that book, which is just one of the courses you get in that lovely, lovely package. Right, <laughs> let's get on with it and like and subscribe if you want. Um, so this is, that you'll notice I'm, I'm so hot. I've driven back from Heathrow today, which is about four hours to my house. I'll do this quickly because it's a bit of a ramble. Nobody's probably interested, but I've got, I can't not mention the fact that I'm just looking hideous and feeling uh, very, very tired because I've just driven back four hours from Heathrow. I've got the smallest and hottest office in the world, which I may have mentioned before. And uh, after this, I very much need to leave this room. <laughs> so I'll do my best not to think of the door and running out of it because it is quite, quite remarkable. So uh, <laughs> the day three, well, let me just first say by saying thanks very much um, to all of you. These are very long rambly videos and I've had some lovely, lovely feedback. and I really appreciate it because I know they're kind of real you know, they're not very relaxed, they're just whistle-stop tours. So do remem remember that you can ask any questions. I do know that uh, you've got comments on these two videos. I'm not ignoring them. I will get to them and we'll, I'll talk about them in the next live session on Thursday as well, which is five o'clock. Uh, comments on comments, come to that, 5UK on the channel. But so I so just want to say thank you very much. Um, so the session started with me belting down from my room very quickly after editing the um, uh, the second day, I'm getting confused already, because I really want to see Christian Grace and Andy Frost doing a lecture. Um, slightly obsessed being Andy Frost. That's right, isn't it? Probably. If not, sorry. I think it is. Um, and Christian, they were doing half an hour each, so they are doing an hour between them, which you probably would have worked out <laughs> had I not clarified that for you, but I hope it helps. Christian, I was kind of, you know, as many of you know, big fan of level one and I, I liked the inevitable choice um I really liked switch one and he was do i thought he was going to do a lot of that sort of stuff and his new trick which is called miracle one which he did do at the end but i thought it was all going to be about that and it wasn't he did a trick from his membership site which was a nice sandwich trick and he did a trick based on kenton nepper's colossal killer which was called Da, 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 da. I've just, uh, for, I've, I've got no working memory whatsoever, so bear with me. It was called Colossal Killed, and it was basically a kind of a quiver, K or equivoke um, process. Uh, very fair sounding one that went to a named card in the pocket, and lots of psychology behind that. And then he performed uh, his Miracle One trick, uh, but didn't, if I remember rightly, explain it. But there we go, and that's good. And that's a kind of card at a number. And it seemed very fair for me. I didn't know it was done, and, and very good. Uh, I will say, I enjoyed it. I struggle, uh, I can't review card magic, pure card magic lectures very well because I can't really talk about the tricks and the tricks that I learned because I don't think I've ever learned a trick from a lecture other than watching it on a screen and pressing pause and going through it with the cards in my hand. I just don't have the brain to learn card magic in a live situation with someone talking me through it. Even a lot of the time when I've got the cards in my hand, I really have to go off. It's, it's the way my head works. So I can't, I, I, I did kind of with the explanations struggle to kind of comprehend them. The tricks themselves I thought were good. If I'm being totally honest, other than I, I liked uh, uh, Miracle One, but the others were, were good tricks. Maybe I'm getting jaded, but I wasn't really blown away by any of them. But Christian's energy was good. It was an enjoyable lecture um, and it was great. But but I just want to see level one again and again and again and learn loads more about that all the time. But that was years ago, wasn't it? So <laughs> that's just me. Uh, and Andy Frost did some, he's, he's got this book on the double lift, which he had on him, on him, which he brought to the session and sold out, I believe. 
I'm looking forward to reviewing that because I love deep diving into one move and he's got a beautiful double lift and he did a load of routines best and he did a one phase ambitious card routine which is really interesting you know just doing one phase of it but building that up and making that a magical moment then he did a, a sandwich trick based on an L, L Nelson routine which was really lovely and with two people standing apart from each other and it's like a card across ends up in a sandwich and he said this lovely thing about you know oddly enough when you perform the fervor even though the magic's already happened you know behind the scenes the further the people are away the the better the reaction which i thought was really nice and you know both of christian and andy were really nice to watch i did enjoy the lectures did i learn that was a card magic no because i can't but i'm sure many of you did but i would love to for your comments below and and for you to tell me what you thought but just just solid stuff next was tina lennart's talk which i i just thought was Utterly stunning. I, I was so inspired afterwards, more inspired than I felt in a very, very long time. And not because I'd seen a load of really good magic tricks, because I'd listened to someone's story, which is really the stuff that gets me. Tina's talk was like someone coming out and just having a conversation with you, which is exactly as it should be. It was just so flowing and nice and, and, and just her. And that's important because that's kind of what the talk was about. She spoke about originality and quoted, um, this this really famous quote by Benjamin Franklin, I think. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to be terrible and get that wrong. But anyway, um, originality is concealing your sources. And, and that's what she was saying. It's, it's originality not being that idea of doing something that's never been done before, but actually doing something that's, that's you, that comes from you, and what's your originality and your voice and your way of being and doing. And it, it really stuck with me because it's something I've been thinking about a lot at the age of 48 and, and being really honest to myself about how many times have I made concessions, have I not done that, have I not listened to what I really want to do and done the thing that will get the gig or, or make my career kind of work or the tricks that will work in a commercial situation and not stuck to what I've been doing. And this year I've been doing a little bit more of that, so I'm not stuck to what I've really wanted to do. And this year I've done a little bit more of that and it is absolutely terrifying to kind of take take a step out of that comfort of the known and going to what is unknown and and working on material that comes not from the book or the other person but you know that's where the bits and pieces may come from but what what do you put into it how do you perform it and I'm I'm telling you this because I think it's so important and I know a lot of people say be original but what does that actually mean and she talked about okay so we're gonna we're gonna use sources so we've got the physical sources we've got the the sources of the stuff we want to do, which we can adapt to make our own, but also the emotional sources, the 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 the, the other bit, the bit that kind of the bits that kind of move us, and there a lot of the time will be outside of magic. So that's the kind of art of it. And and then again, for me, it was wonderful talking about being an introvert and that being your source. Okay, so how do you perform as an introvert? And people say, no, yeah, of course you're not an introvert. You're a performer, and something that I can re relate to so much. Then going into her story about being a street performer, which, we, which of course on a selfish level I could really relate to because that was kind of my journey as well and finding your voice doing that and then adapting that into, into an act which was truly something that came from, from sourcing. You know, she talked about watching Rocky and this wonderful scene between Rocky and Adrian in the first Rocky uh, movie when they first get together and she played that and then you you saw the sort of Mr. Mottman, the similarities, and it was like, I think it is in E.T., isn't there, where there's a scene where it keeps cutting from an old film into Elliot and, and somebody else out on a balcony, and it keeps kind of showing you the mirror image of that happening, and it was kind of like that, and I had real goosebumps, and, and it reminded me of how so, so seldom have I done that thing of going, let's really delve deep into what I want to communicate, and, and it left me that talk feeling slightly saddened which is a good thing of going right of have how many much time have i wasted you know doing the thing i should do rather than the thing i really want to do and i i just it was that's what a talk like that should leave you with and it was and everybody felt the same I and mean, i was just everybody was just going this is that was just beautiful and that was amazing or most people i should say i can't speak for everybody but anyway well gushing rambly that one it sorry about that but um yeah get Get to see that if you get a chance. And I didn't pick up the lecture notes because they were only taking cash and I didn't have cash. So I, again, the lecture notes, I'm really looking forward to getting somehow I shall get them. 
Then there was Mike Caveney's talk on soaring in half illusion. Um, the soaring in half illusion. I'm thinking about his book, which is has soaring written all over it, which is about the story. Uh, and it is a great story. The story of, I'm not going to do it justice. So I'm not going to go into that because that's his job. Uh, because I'm rubbish at the history of magic. I'm going to be totally honest about it. I try my hardest. I read about it. I try and learn about it. But I just it just isn't something I find it easy to connect to and get stimulated by. But if anybody's going to tell me and give me a history lesson, it's going to be Mike Caveney. And it was quite funny. He started it. <laughs> all the kids on the front row, and he started putting his hands together. going, right, kids, put your cards away. It's a history lesson. And that's what it was. And it was great. I preferred it when he went into sort of storytelling modes rather than the facts and the figures. Again, my brain doesn't really compute that stuff in that setting. But I so wanted to take his book away with me and read up because he just had some, there's some great stuff in it. He, he, uh, he had some lovely stories about when people used to do soaring half illusion and try and make it really realistic. <laughs> Just basically convince, convince the audience that the person was actually dead in the box, which I just think is brilliant. And there were people that would leave the theatre thinking, you know, there would be no putting, the, it would be like, oh, did she die? Is she dead? Was that murder? I just, so it was great, really, really funny. Um, and like I said, if you got, want your magic history, any of Mike Caveney's books, Mike's, Mike's your man. Just brilliant. A couple of things I forgot to mention, very importantly. Um, on day two, when I went into the kids' session, and at the beginning of the day for the main session, Harry De Cruz and Gaia Elisa Rossi, I do hope I've got that name right, pronunciation, apologies if I haven't, uh, did a great job uh, presenting and also presenting the kids' session and introducing the kids' session, which I think is very important uh, to mention. And the other thing, because I was just talking about Mike Caveney, the thing that made me realise was that after Mike's talk, Andy and Josh came on and presented them with the Guest of Honour Award. Every year they have a Guest of Honour Award and very well deserves, deserved for Mike and Tina Leonard. Then it was Ma Mario Lopez. I, this was really my inspiration day. The first 45 minutes of Mario's lecture was I was completely transfixed he came on stage and it was very apt that I'd seen Tina's talk on being you because it, it, he all, also spoke about this but you can just see someone that's just in his own skin he comes on in that kind of you know pair of shorts pair of sandals doing incredible magic lovely gags you know anybody does noises with their mouth sounds with their mouth I'm fascinated by that he does did amazing gags where he didn't know he was making sounds this thing about high-fiving people and getting like an echo and then it being out of sync um w was wonderful and then little not throwaway tricks but like the cups and balls without any cups just with your hand with tomatoes coming from apparently nowhere and then turning into a block of ice and I I love all those little bits and pieces you can you can pepper routines with and and with that he was again talking about you know you, you can do a magic trick it's great but I do this and he would do this beautiful um version of the almost like the chinese charming ch challenge thing you know with a with the ribbon and the coins and him taking that and, and making it look as magical as possible and giving himself restraint so the hand's not going to move from here. That's the rule. So I've got the coins here. How can I make it look that they melt onto there? Very magical, very beautiful. But as he says, he doesn't really perform it much because he doesn't feel like he can communicate much to it. And I can see that. It's still restrained. And, and when, he, when he sort of cuts loose and he's doing all this stuff, he's just very, very funny, as he was in the Gala Show, which we'll talk about in a minute. But... But delightful stuff. I did feel like the, it was an hour and a half lecture. I thought an hour would have been great. Uh, the last half hour was sort of Q&A and it went into you know, people asking questions about the tricks and things like that, which again were absolutely brilliant. Nothing wrong with that. But I was a little bit less, um, less interested by that point. But, but just if you get a chance to see him, he's absolutely brilliant. And I'm just going to run through the gala show just to tell you who was on really. I'm not going to say much about each, just a, just a quick thought. Um, Mike Caveney hosting, he's such a professional, such a brilliant MC. I'd say one of the best MCs I've, I've seen host a magic show. Uh, and people like David Williamson, of course, which I don't think I've seen MC, but I, I think I just imagined it. Um, but yeah, so, because I haven't been to hundreds and hundreds of conventions. But anyway, I'm waffling because <laughs> I'm getting hot and starting to lose it. So the first act he brought on was Tina Leonard, and I've talked about the act. The act was brilliant. It's wonderful. I loved it, and it was a delight to watch it again. Um, I won't say much more about that, but if you get the chance to see it, watch that, that 
fleeting, gone like that, that m proper magical moment. It's like seeing real magic and not because of the magic tricks. Lovely magic tricks in it, but it's, it creates something very, very different. And then Mike's set, uh, which was his toilet row routine, which is gypsy thread for stage. That followed by his um, William Tell uh, <laughs> routine, which is so good. Someone out of the audience um, with, he gets them to hold a deck of cards. This is a trick. And the idea is he's going to fire the arrow out of the bow, go 26 cards in and land on one card, which is going to be their chosen card. There's, n there's not a word wasted in, that, in any of these routines. And that's what I mean. He's got that lovely ability, which good MCs and good performers have got, where it's so scripted, but it feels like it isn't. It just feels like a chat and, and improvising around that. You know, the, the woman that came up on stage was just brilliant. She said, yeah, I've been drinking wine and cocktails all afternoon. And, and just the way he worked with that, just not going too into it, not really hammering it, but just the odd line that just did way more than kind of trying to improvise for half an hour around a situation. Wonderful. And I forgot to mention he did this centrifugal force routine. You know, I can't remember what it's called, with a hoop, where you've got the wooden hoop, which I've actually got, my friend Mark Windsor sent me one, little cup of coffee in it and you swing it around basically but again loads of jokes loads of gags and incredibly funny and always forget how exciting that routine is when that drink is getting chucked around fernando figueras i think i've pronounced that right was next i found and i think a lot of people i think there was something lost in translation in the action when it came together it was it was a great idea but it it i think people kind of lost what was happening in the routine the routine was basically um, he got three people out, which he knew, and then, and then he, he, he basically set up all this stuff that telling the audience how he was doing it, but then there was a real reveal and a real um, uh, prediction in the end. It took too long to get there, and again, I think it all got a bit muddled and people were a bit confused because it didn't quite translate, and he is someone that really knows his stuff. He's, if you look at his, um, his at-the-table lecture and all that stuff, he's, he's a very, very established Spanish mentalist. And it was a shame I didn't really get to see him at his best, I don't think. Harry De Cruz did a load of party tricks from his Edinburgh show, I think. Um, and it was like someone showing you a load of party tricks. It was brilliant. I really, really enjoyed it. I really, you know, going show, and just building up the difficulty of them. I think my favorite was, <laughs> was it getting a kid out and, um, and having a whole, a whole reel of, of uh, measuring tape, get him standing kind of on the where the, where the sound guys were or where the, the visual audio stuff was and getting a kid right on the stage and rolling rolling a, an M&M &M or something down the whole thing into the kid's mouth. God, that took a long time to explain. It's too hot, I'm losing it. We'll get there in the end. Right, are you still with us? Let's carry on. And Mario Lopez uh, finished with again, you know, complete mastery of the space. His physicality was wonderful and he finished with this salt pour that goes on for a long time. It was very funny and there was a moment when even though the whole idea of a salt pour is to go on for a long time, that it felt like it was maybe going on for too long. <laughs> but that's kind of the joke, isn't it? But there was a moment where I kind of went, okay. But then he brought it back by the salt coming out of his elbow, coming out of his trousers, all this sort of stuff and it just finished just really beautifully. And, uh, and it was a great show. It was a really good show. That was a rubbish review of it, wasn't it? I don't mean a rubbish, terrible review, but it, I'm just not very good today. So, but you get the idea. Maybe I'll do it again on Thursday Live and you can ask me questions because I've probably covered pretty much nothing. Uh, highlights of the convention for me. Tina Lennart. There you go. Um, and Tobias, Tobias Dostal. Those two were just so... And Luke's... Yeah, there's some loads of great stuff. Luke's talks brilliant as well and of course Mario's I did feel it I came away I've got home and I want to start working on stuff and that's a, I don't feel like that after all conventions and I do feel like that now I'm going to have a little sleep first and a glass of water and just uh, compose myself because uh yeah it's been it's been a convention and that's how we feel after a convention it's always a bit of a downer isn't it? and we go oh, I wish I was back there again um but I just want to thank all of you that were there that came and said hello uh, I had a lovely evening last night. Me and Noel Quart, we just sat down and, and chatted and had a laugh and it was great. And for those people that kind of um, just come and introduce themselves and, and members of onlinemagic.co and, uh, and people that watch the channel as well. So I really, every, anybody that came and said thanks very much. And those of you that have said thanks in the comments, I really appreciate it. Have a great one. 
let's do this properly again one day. <laughs> Go and see online magic.co if you want. Like and subscribe. Take care. Bye-bye.